So I got something in the mail today. Let's take a look inside. I pre-ordered this model about two years ago as a bit of a test balloon. I wanted to see what it looks like inside and also get an idea what a factory sound installation would sound like. However, things happen and I already have four other Atlas Gold engines on pre-order. So yeah, that didn't quite go as planned. This is the latest run of the GP30 after a long time without any releases of this model in N-Scale. This is the Gold Edition with factory DCC sound. This model comes in the usual Atlas packaging, safely kept in place by the foam insert with two small strips of foam protecting the handrails on the rear of the engine. There are no additional details or anything that you need to add to the model. Let's get it out of the box to get a closer look. If you have bought any recent Atlas offerings, you won't be surprised. The molding is crisp and detailed and so is the paint job. The handrails are quite fine as usual and the white safety paint at the ends seems pretty thin. Having spent a lot of time retrofitting sound into various Atlas engines, I'm mostly interested in the inner values. So let's take a look inside. The shell wiggles off as per usual, no surprises here either. Underneath the shell are a couple of updates to the old mechanism. The frame has been modified to fit the lock sound select direct. Underneath the decoder board toward the rear of the engine is a black plastic isolating strip. There is room for at least two tentel caps under it, so I will probably add a small keep alive once I've figured out how to connect it to the board. The frame halves aren't held together by screws anymore, but by two plastic clips. The speaker is hidden in the tank and the electrical connection to the trucks has been updated to use wired connections instead of wipers. Honestly, I don't think I'm a big fan of the two weird foam strips. Like a lot of XCB and Q engines, this particular road number had the headlight on the nose and a mass light between the number boards. At some point in the late 70s, the mass light was removed. On this model, the headlight is between the number boards and the nose light is non-functional, but has clear plastic lenses, so it's possible to mount an SMD LED behind it if you want to. The outputs for at least AUX1 have a corresponding LED soldered to the board. Unfortunately, it's on the underside of the decoder, so I'm not sure how useful that is. With the factory installation, there is some light leaking into the cap from the headlight. The engine wheels were a bit grimy out of the box, resulting in less than optimal electrical pickup. So I cleaned the wheels with alcohol and that improved the situation tremendously. The wheel gauge is a bit on the tight side, but not too tight. The model comes with a huge amount of inertia programmed in, so I reprogrammed the engine to my usual function setup and reduced the inertia settings while I was at it. I also tweaked the motor settings where I reduced the reference voltage in CV53 from 14 volts to 8 volts to get motor control over the entire range of speed steps. Let's listen to the actual sound of the engine.
So that's the latest run of the GP30. Overall I like it and I'm looking forward to receiving my other pre-orders. If you want to know how to retrofit a sound decoder, there's a video on the left side of the screen and I've also linked a playlist with a couple of my sound installations on the right side of the screen.